Are you interested in running the stable diffusion version of Dream Booth to train multiple concepts in your own PC in under seven minutes? Of course you are, so let's dive straight in. Obviously, there is a Google Colab for this as well, so you don't have to do it locally, but I will be focusing on the local edition. You're going to need Microsoft Windows or Linux, of course, with an NVIDIA GPU. Unfortunately, AMD stuff it probably isn't going to work for this. You're going to need at least 8 gig of VRAM for Linux and at least 10 gig of VRAM for Microsoft Windows. You'll need Anaconda as well to manage your virtual Python environments. Just click download and then double click the exe or run the shell script and that will get you Anaconda installed. I do have a link for Microsoft Windows beginners that is just appearing up there somewhere that you can click on to get Anaconda installed. You're also going to need a compiler. Now on Microsoft Windows, this is Microsoft Visual Studio. I happen to use Visual Studio 2019 build tools because it was already on there from something else. But 2022 seems to be the latest edition. So you can download the free community edition and then select desktop development with C++ and that should get you going. On Linux, you just run apt install build essential and that will get you your C compiler. You're also going to need NVCC. So there it is. You go to developer.nvidia.com CUDA downloads and pick the operating system architecture version and installer type that you fancy. There I'm using the Windows local XE. I download that and then I double click on the XE and follow the on screen prompts. There we go. So now we've got all the prerequisites installed. You're going to need some images. Now, ideally, you're going to need at least five images per subject, a subject being an object or a person or a style or a pose, whatever it is that you want to train. Now, ideally 512 by 512, but it doesn't matter what size they are because it will resize them automatically. If you're using a non-square aspect ratio, you may want to use the minus minus center crop option. You're also going to need a diffuser's stable diffusion model, not one of the original checkpoint files. This can be in a local directory, or you can just download it from Hugging Face with a Hugging Face CLI, which we will do later. And yes, indeed, the new Runway ML inpainting model can be fine tuned. So let's create that new Anaconda environment. You do, of course, have Anaconda installed and your Anaconda prompt open. I have already in created mine, so I don't need to run Conda Create, but you will if you don't have one already and then I just run Conda Activate Diffusers or whatever name you picked for it. You're then going to install PyTorch and Git. Now I'm using PyTorch 1.12.1 here. I know 1.13 has just come out, but I haven't done any testing with that. So um, yeah, have a go and let me know, <laughs> see if it works with 1.13. Uh, Conda install Git if you don't have Git already. Most people do have Git. Uh, on Linux, you can just apt install Git and that will get you Git forever that you can use everywhere. Uh, again, Triton is a Linux only thing still. Um, you may be able to get it working on Windows, but good luck with that. So pip install minus u minus minus pre Triton if you are on Linux. Xformers, this now works on Microsoft Windows. This is the bit that didn't work before. So you can download this. Uh, if you're using Linux, you can just conda install Xformers. So that is nice and easy. If you're on Microsoft Windows like I am here, you're going to have to download it. I download all the GitHub stuff into a GitHub directory. So git clone that. Then once you've git cloned it, CD into that directory and then update it. Yes, lots of commands to copy and paste. Again, all down in the description. Click the little arrow, then more, and you will see all those instructions there and a link to the paste bin document as well. So it updated the submodule, then pip install minus r requirements.txt. And then we're also going to install Funk Torch, Ninja, and Bits and Bytes. Now, there's another file that you'll need to edit inside the Xformers uh, directory there. So Xformers underscore init underscore dot pi. And by default, you will have, is Funk Torch available? False. But we've just installed it, so it's true. There we go. Brilliant. Now, there's a, a number of environment variables you need to set on Microsoft Windows. I didn't need to set these on Linux. So if you're on Linux, you can just ignore them. So I set force CUDA equal to 1. I also set Torch CUDA Arc equals 8.6. If you're not sure which architecture you've got, you can go over to the CUDA page on Wikipedia and that will show you there. I'm using a 3090, which is 8.6. So find your card and that will give you the magic numbers. I'm also going to set CUDA visible devices to zero because I only have one GPU. And there's just a quick echo just to show me that everything is all right. There we go. Yes, the environment variable did take it is set to 8.6 then you can do pip install minus e dot and that will install xformers for you now that will take about 10 minutes to build obviously i built it already so it'll be all nice and quick here if you want to rebuild it 
then you can do python setup.py clean and also python setup.py develop so that will that will clean out the build directory basically it, it deletes the build directory and recompiles it now you will get a little note there uh, that it has detected CUDA version uh, 11.8 because that's the one we installed up here earlier uh, but minor uh, version mismatches don't really matter and it will still compile i know we installed 11.8 and 11.6 and it all seems a bit confusing but don't worry about it so next we're on to the uh, shivam diffusers so we git clone this again as well so i go back to my github directory git clone diffusers there we go and then i can cd into diffusers and then examples and dream booth and there i am just going to do the pip install exactly like it says on this page here so if you scroll down here you've got uh, installing the dependency so i'm basically just running those two commands apart from i am running pip install minus r requirements.txt without the u because pytorch 1.13 has just come out so i'm just in making sure that i'm installing all the versions that i know about so if you've got a a local model it doesn't matter if you don't need to do hugging face cli if you haven't got a local model you will need to do hugging face cli to download and there you just go to the, it will give you a little link and you go over to hugging face cli it's got your access token so when it's asking you for your token you click copy there that will copy your token then you go over to anaconda you press the right mouse button that will paste it in then press return it won't appear on your screen but don't worry and that will log you in once it's logged you in it'll give you this option here as well if you want to save your credentials which is probably worth doing now if you're on linux uh, you can pip install deep speed at this point but of course microsoft deep speed is not available on microsoft windows so i won't be using it you are next ready to run accelerate config now i'm going to basically use all the default options on this so zero zero do i want to use the cpu only no now if you were using deep speed and you want to try and you know offload everything a bit like it says in here so when you scroll down here you've got training on an 8 gig gpu you would select yes to this bit but i'm i'm not because it doesn't work on windows so no do i want to use fb16 yes i do fb16 brilliant so we've done the accelerate config and now we are pretty much ready to do it. We've done our hugging face CLI, we've logged in, and now we've got all these different scripts here. So what I've done is I've basically taken launch.sha, this script here, and I've changed this into a batch file. So there's the batch file. As you can see, it's exactly the same, pretty much, uh, apart from it's been Windowsified. So it's got echoes and, and carrots and all sorts of things in there. So it, it's essentially that script. So this, is what you're going to be running it's a very long command i've also added in this num cpu threads because that's for my cpu uh, you may not have eight six maybe a better number or four entirely depends on your cpu it will tell you the first time you run it and it will say hey uh, I've, I've run num cpu threads per process and i've set it to this so you can just put that before your train dream booth command when you're doing accelerate launch Okay, so now the first option here we've got is the pre-trained model. So this is where it's going to download the Stable Diffusion version 1.5, a brand new shiny one from Runway ML. If you've got a model downloaded already, then obviously you put your directory and wherever your diffusers model is already. I haven't got one. Well, I have, but it's in the cache, so I just leave it like that. The entire time it also uses the new vae as well you can pass any other vae there so that's using the stability ai the new vae there output directory that's where you're going to save your models with prior preservation yes please seed now changing the seed can actually give you a variety of different outcomes so you know if you've trained one model and you're like a bit uh, i don't know then try changing the seed that might give you a completely different result uh, train text encoder is also a new option it does use a little bit more vram though so if you're if you're struggling with uh, with memory take out the train text encoder mixed precision fp16 nice and fast now this has a much lower learning rate when you're training the text encoder it's now 1e minus 6 if you're not training the text encoder then do put that back to 5e minus 6 okay uh everything else is pretty standard so number of class images 50 sample batch size that's four by default but if you've got a very low vram gpu you may want to put that down to one max training steps uh 800 so that's when it will finish save interval now if you want to save lots of checkpoints along the way so 
Say, for example, I wanted to save one halfway through training, then you can set save interval to half the number of steps. Now, I only want one checkpoint at the end because reasons. Uh, so I'm going to set my save interval the same as max train steps. Now, also, if you want to automatically convert your thing into a checkpoint, then just add the, uh, the scripts, convert diffusers. So if we go back here, see in here, scripts, uh, convert diffusers to original stable. So you just want to run that basically. And it's got a couple of options. It's got the model path. So that, that'll be your output directory there. So there, and then checkpoint path, that's where you want to save it to. So you could put that, you could set that to your uh, stable diffusion uh, models directory and it'll just output straight into there if you want to, or maybe you've got a, a central model repository where you put them all. But yeah, that checkpoint path is the output, model path is the input basically. And then we've got one final thing here, which is this new bit here, concepts list. What is that? Well, this is where you train the multiple or single concepts. So here is an example of a concepts list. It's got them in here as well. So examples, dream booth, so that is the default concept list. It's just got one thing in it, but you can build these up because it's just a JSON file. So that's what it is if it's one face. So instance prompt. So this is the face that I'm, I'm trying to train here. So instance is basically what you're training. Class is from the class preservation. Uh, so that's sort of what it's overwriting. <laughs> uh, training data, that's the, those are the images that you created earlier. All these 512, 5x512 ones that you've got saved and that they're all nice and, and ready to go. Yeah. And then you've got the class directory. So it's probably best to make your own class images and put them in there. So if you've got a cartoon face, go into automatic 1111, for example, generate a, car a cartoon face, put it in your classes directory. That will probably be a whole lot better than the ones that ge they generate. But yeah, anyway, so let's have a, just have a quick look at those. So training, for example, there we've got bell face so there. I've got some examples from there and then big bunny got some examples from there and then elephant's dream got some examples from there for example so they're, they're just they're just all square pictures and there is an example of some william morris pictures so i've got all those things so how do i do them all at once there we go like that so you just you just keep adding them how many things do you want to add you can add stars you can add faces you can add poses whatever you want you just keep putting them in there so it's exactly the same as the single version but you've got loads of them so don't forget to put a comma at the end there, comma at the end there, and your very last one, just skip the comma, because JSON. So this is exactly the same as one, but we've got multiples. So instance prompt, there you go. That's what I want to create. Now here I've I've put a little arrow at the beginning, just because that's, you know, it, it makes it a really obvious token that that is the thing that I'm, that I'm training. Uh, it doesn't have to be that, you know, you can have it like that or whatever you fancy whatever you fancy class prompt is a style so it's it's not the william so the william morris style as opposed to just a style training william morris picture so there's there's all the training directories class i haven't actually generated them yet but i'm creating style samples so that will just make a style in the style samples directory and then rinse and repeat so there Sintel face which is a 3d face training is the Sintel face back over there training Sintel face there i've got the Sintel face so i've got 16 Im images yeah OK, so you've got the you've got the gist of things there. So that's how you train multiple concepts. Basically, you just keep copying and pasting these. So if I wanted to add another one, for example, I'd put a comma on the end there. Oops. Paste that in there and then I just start, start typing whatever, whatever the, the new thing is. But I'm just going to keep three in there for now. So there you go. That's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of options. Uh, now, there are a few more options in there as well so you can obviously uh run with minus minus help and that will show you all the options so we don't do this train dream booth oops python train dream booth minus minus help and this will give you a whole screen full of options so do check all of those you know if, if you want to scale the learning rate or if you want to change the log interval or if you don't want to cache the latents and all, all that sort of stuff. So there, there are a wide variety of different options that you can use. OK, there we go. So that will take about seven minutes by default on the uh, 
on that one, on the 800 on the 800. Now, another thing when you're training multiple concepts is that you probably will want to increase the steps. So here we've got the uh, save, train steps there, 800. For the multiple concepts, I did that at 1200. So I, I, I said 800 for the first one, and then I basically added 200 for every subsequent thing in there. Whether that's a good number or not, I don't know. <laughs> but it came out all right. It came out OK. So let's have a quick look at this, shall we? Yes. All right. Let's switch over to Automatic 1111 and we'll have a look at what these models actually produced. So let's try these things individually to start with. We'll start off with the William Morris style. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. That's that's not too bad. That's pretty good. That does indeed look like the William Morris style. Let's try the, the Sintel face as well. Throw some negative prompts in here just for fun too. There we go. Let's have a look at the Sintel face. Yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I do like that. All of this seems to be made up. I don't think that that was ever an outfit that they wore. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the elephant's dream face as well. Completely different face. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's come out very well. I like that. Okay, so there you go. That's it's got all three of them in there, <laughs> even with multiple noses, even with multiple noses. And can you style them? Can you style them? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Okay, so let's have uh, the uh, elephant's dream face in an anime style. Can we get an anime style elephant's dream face? Yeah, we can. Let's just throw some random seeds in there as well. So it's got another guy in there, but that that is definitely him in an anime style. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I do like that. All right. Can we do the same with the Sintel face? Can we have an anime Sintel face? Will it be completely different? Yes, it is. There we go. We've got the trademark hair. That's that's pretty good. That is definitely an anime version of that. Okay. So oh, there's, there's a real version. That's an anime cosplay Sintel. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right. So how about can we use the William Morris style on different things? So can we have a William Morris mug. There we go. We've got a William Morris mug. That's absolutely fine. Can we have a vase? Can we have a vase with that on as well? Can we get all sorts of different things going? Yes, we can. We can put that style on anything we fancy. Can we put that style on something else we trained, like the elephant's dream face? Sort of. Sort of. Faces don't normally have styles, but you can mix them in together. So there you go. That's three things all at once, trained really, really quickly on your own PC. Looks fantastic. But don't forget to click on one of these 